the Mason men, when we were driving around yesterday, we were sort of contemplating what we were going to talk about this morning because the theme is love. And so, um, honestly, the first thing that came to mind was uh, satire. And so, as we talked about it, we thought it might look something like this. Good morning. My name is Luke, and my brother is Noah, and I love my brother. Good morning, my name is Noah, and my brother's Luke, and I love my brother. <laughs> but uh, but as, you, as you demonstrated, we knew there would be a little risk because there would be a lot of laughter and then maybe some pe people falling out of their pew if they, were not, uh, <laughs> if they weren't careful. But, but seriously, as, we, as I was thinking about love and what, what love looks like to me, you don't have to think very hard or look very far if you're a part of this community here at Wells. Because to me, love looks a lot like a table full of youth on a Wednesday night sitting around, laughing, all coming from different schools and talking about nothing and everything at the same time. Love looks like a group of faithful pilgrims on a Tuesday morning down in the fellowship hall saying a prayer before they begin our Tuesday morning ministries. For me, love looks like a, a YouTube audio of a service here at Wells that I and many of you can enjoy wherever, wherever we are. Love looks a lot like a Facebook posting by any number of you, but often like people like Keith Tonkel and Bruce Reynolds who encourage me in ways that are unspeakable. And, uh, and finally, love looks a lot like you. It looks a lot like really what we call good folk good people who help to guide the journeys of my boys here because they see you um, laugh and cry, they see you love and struggle, they see you serve with joyful hearts and show them what it means to be a people of faith and trying to live faithfully in a broken world. That's what love looks like to me. So now the boys are going to light the, the, can the Advent candles and we'll be lighting the previous ones for peace, joy, and hope, and also the, the candle of love for this Sunday. And the choir will now have a call to worship. <clears throat> Jesus boy they made you be born in a manger sweet little holy child we didn't know who you were didn't know to save us, Lord, to wash our sins away. Our eyes were blind, we couldn't see. We didn't know. didn't know it was you. 
just seems like we can't do right. Look how we treated you. But please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know it was you. Sweet little Jesus boy, born Time ago, sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you Please stand as we share the opening sentences. O beloved of the Lord, the one who comes so long ago, continue to draw near to us, offering forgiveness and healing to all. Please share the prayer. O Holy Virgin, our souls, come with us so we may rejoice in our hearts as we give our love and in service to others. Please, please remain standing as we sing verses 1, 3, and 6 of hymn number 234, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Thank you. The roadie's got that. And while the roadie is fixing the mic, we can affirm our faiths together in spite of electronics. If you will, turn to page 881, and if you so choose, join with us as we affirm our faith together this Sunday of love and Advent. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I share this with you this morning. I shared this at our men's prayer breakfast today, which uh, was very good. Thank you, Pastor. Good stuff. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Please give my love and gratitude to the men's prayer breakfast group. I'm sorry I'm not able to be there, and I look forward to return when I can. But a very Merry Christmas to you all and to Wells. Please continue to pray for us. My love to all, Bruce. So Keith has challenged me to do something, really, ever since I got here, and that's to preach without using notes. And I did it last week. And... Uh, this week, as I kept going through, I said, well, why not just try it on the 830 crowd as well, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to share my sermon with you right now, and then uh, after the choir leads us in their choral offering before the sermon, I'll come and read the gospel passage, and, uh, and then Keith will come lead us in a time of communion. But this Advent has been, been treating me really weird this year. A lot of different things have happened throughout this year in my family and in my church family. And the thing that screams loudest to me is the word love. I know the Beatles said all you need is love and then they broke up, but <laughs> I'm sure they still loved each other. I watched the 75th birthday thing for John Lennon last night on AMC and and Ringo and Paul had, had great words. But love is the time of year when this little child comes to Bethlehem through a teenage mom, and he screams and he says, my birth signifies that you will never die because I have come your death, though earthly, you will pass. And we've had some funerals this year. I think of Gene Rummels, Richard Rohr, Richard Roberson, my bad. Richard Rohr has meant a lot to me this year as well. But the one that really keeps echoing in my mind is the death of Jim Peters. He would get on, me and David. Oh, I want my upper rooms. I got people to take upper rooms to. And he would come grab upper rooms. I think about our Tuesday morning food group, the people that show up to, to bag groceries, the people that show up to hand them out, the people that show up just to love other people. When we travel to Bethlehem, which isn't very far from Nazareth, by the way, we walk a road that, um, that I have to wonder, what in the world was Joseph thinking? You see, I was adopted. I shared with the men's prayer breakfast this morning. I was introduced to my uh, birth parents when I had my 40th birthday. I decided I needed to know a little bit about where I came from. 
and with all the didacted material that I got from the Mississippi Children's Home, I was able to piece together. My birth mom was 15 when I was conceived. My birth dad was killed in a car crash two months after I was conceived. They sent my mom, my birth mom, to a, to a little place away from Corinth so no one would know. And then came John. And then at four months old, Bob and Estelle Brazier adopted me. Love personified. You adopt a child that's not yours biologically. And it makes a huge statement about love. You see, this passage from Micah, which is in our lectionary readings today, but it's not something that we normally preach from. You know, Micah is not one of the most quoted prophets of the Old Testament. <laughs> but in verse 2 of chapter 5 through verse 5a, it says this. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephraim, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord and in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And he shall feed his flock, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he will be the one of peace. If you read a different version of this, it says one of the ordinary clans or tribes of Israel. Christians have this whacked out view that you've got to be extraordinary to be used for God. And it's just not true. You don't believe me? <laughs> I'm ordinary. I don't have a lot of riches. I don't have a lot of wealth. But I do know what it means to be loved. Sat through a worship service Friday afternoon uh, when we picked Grant up. Home of grace. <clears throat> and in Galatians 5.1, it says that when you leave this place... The yoke of bondage will not consume you anymore. And there were seven other guys ranging from Grant's age to 45 years old. Eight guys graduating, telling their story of why they stayed 90 days. And that once they leave that place, they know the battle gets worse. Because you're not confined in this, I called it a youth camp for 90 days. Because all they talked about was God and how to get over their problems. God uses ordinary people to make extraordinary things happen. In the gospel passage this morning, Mary goes to see Elizabeth, her cousin, and John the Baptist jumps in the womb. I got you, man. It, it made me laugh, too. Because I had this vision, you know, <clears throat> I can do this in this service because Leanne's not here, but when she was pregnant with our children, uh-oh, she's texting me. <laughs> you know, she would lay still at night, and she would be asleep, and I would just watch her, and you could watch the movements of all three of our kids. And it was the coolest thing. And then she'd go, quit staring at me. I can't sleep. And I'm going, okay. But the scripture says the baby leapt in the womb when Mary was there. Two women, different places in their lives, but both going through the same thing. 
I don't know what this Advent has been teaching you. But today is the Sunday of love. And I don't know that I have ever felt more loved in my life than I do now at this place and in my home and with my family. Victoria Williams has a song that says, You are loved. And the chorus at the end says, You are loved. You are loved. You are really, really loved. A man takes his cane to a waterfall. He has a vision, starts talking baby talk. Jesus hung out with the drunkards and the sinners, and he made them feel loved. But not for the grace of God. There go I. And I will share this with you. Trina is about to have her existing trait replaced to a smaller one. The smaller one will not have a cutoff on it. This is a big step, but there will be pain involved in certainly anxious moments. Please pray for the ease of transfer and as little pain as possible. In the midst of what Bruce and Trina have been going through, when we left the Shepherd Center a week ago, Friday, I don't know that I had ever felt more love in one place than I had at that moment. Let's pray. God, we know that you love us. You love us because you sent your son to take away the pain of death, to ease the pain of life, and to let us know that we always have someone that loves us, an undeniable, unrejectable. We pray for Trina at this very moment. God, you have shown miracles already in her life, even in the pain of this paralysis. You've shown Bruce your presence, and we continue to pray for them. And we pray specifically this morning at this very moment that the pain of this surgery, the pain of this transition would be minimal. And in some way, Reveal your presence to each of them. Be it through a nurse, be it through a doctor, be it through one of the maintenance staff. But show them today, show them today the love of the child who has come. The sweet little Jesus boy. And we pray this prayer, and we remember the words your son taught us in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. I would like for y'all to do one thing for me. <clears throat> I'm going to have a blessing for you, and when you respond, I would like for you to respond in this way, and with y'all also. The peace of Christ be with you.
Amen. Please stand as we sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn number 250, Once in Royal David's City. Please remain standing as we share Luke 1, verses 46 through 55 on page 199. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and the holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those who fear God from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Take a moment to greet one another in love, please, and thank you.
here's what's wrong. wobbling like a little monkey. Look at it. it there's a, there's a okay. thing under there that holds it, and then these crochet hooks hold it. Okay, crew, let's get together. Hey, y'all go help me. It's love, it's love, it's love, it's love that, that makes, makes the world go round. It's love, it's love, it's love. It's love that makes the world go round. It's love that makes the world go round. And that's a nice little song to sing, but it's a big challenge to live because loving is working and wanting the good of the other and putting oneself in that place. Thank you for being here this day. Um, I love that sweet little Jesus boy sung by that sweet little daughter of ours. <laughs> And some of you all know that she was raised right behind the church in the parsonage there, uh, which is now the youth building. And uh, so we're delighted that she and her family could be with us this particular day. Um, at the service that is coming in a little while, we will bless the baptism of Spencer Ringer all day. A quick word about that because it relates to us all. The baptism was performed at a nursing home. And... Um, when they went to get the little baptismal trophy, uh, the pastor said, sorry, we didn't do it, and so we can't give it. And uh, so we said, gosh, that doesn't sound right. Um, and I'm not trying to be critical. I don't know all the circumstances, but we said, but we want to do it. And so they're going to come, and we're going to double green baptize. Uh, we'll bless the baptism and give them the little gift that they were looking for before. We will not be at the church on this Wednesday, but Thursday, Christmas Eve, will be filled with two opportunities. 5.30, uh, we will have a totally informal service over at Serendipity House. We'll sing a song, remember a Christmas uh, moment. Sing a song, remember a Christmas moment, have the sacrament, uh, and then uh, be on our way. 7 o'clock, the uh, Christmas liturgy that a lot of people love, and we would love for you to be able to be there. Tonight is the biggie. We have the Christmas supper at 6.00 the annual choir presentation at 7. They have worked so very hard. So please not only come, but bring someone with you. It's a catered supper. Uh, it's $5 if you can afford it, $20 for a family if you can afford it. And uh, we will work in the Christmas party, so it's going to be a swifto movo uh, for the evenings. Yes, James is up and looks like he's ready. charge you, since we just had charge conference, to sit with someone you didn't know before this evening, and then enjoy the concert, because we have had so much fun putting it together for you all. So please do come and support the choir. <laughs> That li oh, yes. Bring yes. Yeah, bring a dessert tonight. And that also leads to a special word of thanks for the musicians we have in this church. You realize that we have a church here in the inner city, a small congregation with world class musicians. You know? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Just a quick story you might be interested in. We were uh, in Strasbourg uh, in Europe. And uh, Jamie decided that she would text James. And she said, there's an opera house here, and it's really beautiful. And said, you would really be touched by it, moved by it. He said, oh, yeah, I sang there. <laughs> <laughs> the angel tree thing worked out well. Thank you so very much. Notice 37 children from 14 families. And what a lovely thing that was. Uh, we have the children's bulletins that are always on the table out for the children. And... Let's see, anything else that needs to be announced and are said from the congregation? All righty, let's see what prayer requests we have that are special that you'd like to lift up at this time, sir. Brenda Trigg has had another death in her family. Good heaven. This is the third straight death in Brenda's family. She lost her sister. 
lost a sister. We talked to her just this last week. Yes, Penny. Uh, she didn't work this morning. She won't have this drink. Okay, we will do that. And many of you may know, but in case you do not know, uh, Kathy Acey's mama died. And that uh, service will be held later. Other requests of prayer? Yes, Keith. We will do that. Thank you. Yes, Jane. My sister-in-law, Joyce. Okay. Her sister-in-law, Joyce. David? We're in the name of your Lord and Lord Sam. Okay. Yes. I'd appreciate continued prayers for Grant to see her in her society. It's a big one. It's a big one. Jim? Uh, prayers for Amanda. She'll have to clear her hair every other week. Yeah. Good deal. Yes, dear staff. We'll pray, and if any of you are ready to do something like that, let the office know. Yes, Rex. Remind me of Debbie Fair is having a stroke today. Okay. Ron. Uh, Nancy, who's having some difficulty. There's Bob. Okay. And some prayers of real thanksgiving for all the thing with Trina and Bruce. And let me tell you something. That was a very dramatic and continues to be a dramatic part of our life. But we love them in exactly the same way we love you and your point of need. We don't want to overlook anybody that's going through any difficult times. So let's pray together, please. Our Father, there are lots of things on our mind and in our hearts. And we've named some names this day and lifted up some needs. There are other things that we didn't say out loud, but they're very real and much alive in us. In the name of Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit, Touch and bless, heal and comfort. Thank you for the chance to pray, to pray outside ourselves and for others. In Christ, amen. Birthdays and anniversaries, sir. Oh, this Wednesday, uh, so 18th. Okay, praise God. You want a prayer? Okay, we'll do it in a little bit. Yes. Can yeah, can. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't hear you, Ken. Okay, Uncle on Friday. Yes, Harold. Okay, Tuesday. Uh, you want to just join the altar? You can if you want to. Did I see a hand? Yeah, Bill. Okay, okay, yeah, baby. My baby sister on Christmas Eve. Baby sister on Christmas Eve, yes. Okay. Okay, yes. All right. Yes, sir. My godchild and my uncle. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ray. Yes, my dear. I have a granddaughter who is going to give birth to my first great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Isn't that neat? So we need prayer. Let me tell you an interesting thing. I want you all to try to figure this out. Have you all noticed how many birthdays we have in December? <laughs> we need to figure that nine months back and see what's going on, you know. But anyway, is that it? Are we ready? Okay, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. If y'all will come right now, give us bless be the time. Come if you feel led. Dear Lord, thank you so very much for bringing these folks into the world and then for bringing Pam and Jerry to us and for the chance that we have had not only to minister but to love one another, to love one another in the way that you had in mind when you called us into our being. And so we thank you for the chance to remember 18 years together and hear us as we share our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. thank you for rejoicing with us. As we celebrate the anniversary of this special couple, make love grow even better and deeper as the years go by.
in Christ. Amen. Thank you all so much for not only being here today, but also for the chance that we have had this year to minister in this community and way beyond this community. It's quite, quite kind of interesting that uh, I received a text of the day before yesterday from Melbourne, Australia, uh, thanking God for the life of this church, and missed a telephone call from Madrid, from the Eddies, to wish us Merry Christmas. So thank you for letting the church happen. We have closed that financial gap a little bit more than 50%. And so God is good. And at this time, we've received tithes and offerings. And let me tell you something. If you're totally broke and you're in bad trouble, take out a dollar or two, but not too much more than that, okay? <laughs> Let's have our ushers come now and receive our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, dear Father, for the chance to be givers in a getting and taking world. In the name of Christ, amen. Mary had a baby. Mary had a baby. Oh, Mary had a baby. was called King Jesus. Mary had a baby. My Lord, what did she name him? Oh, my Lord, what did she name him? My Lord, what did she name him? He was called King Jesus. Mary had a baby. My Lord, wasn't that a my? Wasn't that a mighty day? Wasn't that a mighty day when Jesus Christ was born? When Jesus Christ was born, star shone in the east, star shone in the east, a star shone in the east, when Jesus Christ was born when Jesus Christ was born.
Thanks, guys. Not only does Ken have cool hair, that's a cool stool, man. <laughs> I gotta give me one of them. First, I'd like to get some more hair. <laughs> I invite you, if you will, to stand as we have our gospel lesson this morning. <clears throat> it's taken from the message. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. You're so blessed among women, and the babe in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. And Mary said, I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I, the most fortunate woman on earth. The gospel of our Lord for the people of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I want to share with you a poem from my friend Bill Maloney, who after a difficult time of divorce a number of years ago, and... Uh, lack of success in the music area had to find a different kind of job. It's called On to Bethlehem. So I'm at the wheel, it's 3 a.m., waiting for the caffeine to come around. Life rears its ugly head again. They say your radio's cool, but your retail is way down. And I'd like to say I'm faithful to the task at hand. Speaking gospel to a handful and others with their list of demands. It's cold this year and I'm late on my dues. It's cold in here, ah, but that's nothing new. My heart's electric with your love again. So on to Bethlehem. You might surmise that I ran there, but I really only crept. Led me to the place where love runs wild and then dogs your every step. You know how fickle my heart is, prone to wander, my Lord. Yeah, we talk, but it's at arm's length. I always got one eye on the door. God wraps himself up in human skin for those who want to touch. And God let them drive the nails in for those of us who know too much. You come bearing all our burdens, and you take your lovers for a ride, but we stay holed up in our cages, fashioned by our own design. So tell me, what is your secret? What's on your blister soul? What is that one little secret 
You know the one that's taken its toll. Remember, daddy is banging on your gate again, and he will not leave you alone. He has a whole lot of dry rooms in the finest of homes. On to Bethlehem. Keith. James, will you lead us in a verse of let us break bread together? Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall down on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let's pray together, please. Lord, your birth was simple, and your life was without much flair, just filled with power. That's what we pray for as we take this communion this day. The power of your spirit touching our spirits so that we might be refreshed and renewed in the journey of faith. Each of us, dear God, make our confession in our own way in this quiet moment. Hear us. Thank you, God, not only for hearing, but for taking your place as the host of this table. We praise your name. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, now, take and eat. This is myself, broken and given for you. When the meal was over and done, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. It's the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood, and it has a purpose. It's for the remission of sins, for you and for many, many others. So, as often as you drink from the cup, do so in remembrance of me. John and I will be on this side of the altar, and Luke and Daddy, James, will be on the other side. As soon as we're in place, please come and receive, then rise and go in peace.
Is there anyone else that we missed that we could come to? Okay. So uh, <clears throat> Friday after the graduation ceremony where Grant was in treatment, this lady came up to me. She says, you like bracelets? I said, yeah, it covers up all my age spots on my arm. And she says, well, I want you to have this. And it says, Jesus loves you. Love God. Love people. Serve all. One love, one hope. Amen. Amen. If you will stand as we sing our hymn of invitation, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> 